Welcome to Into the Night. I'm Nari, your guide on today's excursion down a twisted path. Be careful not to get lost. Be it dark or light, it's easy to lose your way. Are you ready? Then let's begin. A Box of Matches Tuesdays were Henry Slidell's favorite days. His love for them began when he was a boy, and his grandmother gave him a stamp-collecting set for his tenth birthday. His celebration fell on a Tuesday that year, and every week at the same time, he and Grandma Pat added to his collection. They spent hours poring over his new acquisitions, and his grandmother would show him her own displays. Those were special times, and Henry would forever equate Tuesdays with happiness and warm memories. Grandma Pat lived in one of those old, carefully preserved homes that made Henry feel as though he had stepped back in time when he stayed there. And he stayed there a lot. His parents weren't very involved in his upbringing, so he practically lived at Grandma Pat's. That was just fine with Henry. He developed a special bond with her that shaped who he was and who he would become. Even after her death, he felt that she had never quite left him. On some days... He was sure he felt her gentle guidance with decisions, large and small. Henry's grandmother was well-cultured and had exquisite taste. Having grown up as the daughter of a librarian and a museum curator, she was well-versed in fine literature and art. Beautiful carpets covered the hardwood floors, and expensive paintings adorned the walls. Years of travel had deeply influenced her eclectic style. If it caught her eye, she made it fit her decor primitive mingled with modern museum-quality pieces. Somehow, his stately grandmother made every new addition to her home blend with her other pieces. She had a real eye for placement. Grandma Pat was also quite the collector, and of more than just stamps. Of course she acquired fine art and exotic home furnishings. However, one of her favorite pastimes was simpler in nature. She loved gathering an assortment of teapots. It was an interest that stretched from her childhood until she passed. When she was ten, she was given a special teapot that she loved to show off. This sentimental favorite of hers held center stage above all others. It was unique and whimsical, and it was shaped in the form of a little girl's head with a purple butterfly as the lid. That first teapot began her foray into picking up the beautiful and the unusual. She never worried about their current worth, or if they were antiques when she purchased them. She bought from the heart, and used her artistic eye to judge if a new find was worthy or not. As she told Henry, Everything gets old. So some day, as long as it's cared for, any item will become an antique. That includes you and me. If it appeals to you, get it, and you won't have any regrets later. She'd then hug Henry and take him to the kitchen for cookies or some other treat. Grandma Pat was an excellent baker, and Henry was her biggest fan. He never turned down one of her creations. Henry fondly remembered her sunny yellow kitchen, highlighted by a wall of windows across one side. The oven, range, and countertop covered the opposite wall. Ornate wooden cabinets filled with figurines and, of course, teapots, adorned the area under the windows. The sunlight streaming in made the figurines almost come to life in the mind of a little boy already jubilant from cookies. A long wooden table filled the center of the kitchen, acting as both cooking island and social gathering place. Henry spent hours at that table, visiting with Grandma and staring out the windows into her lovely yard. In the spring and summer, the luscious smells of flowering trees and vines wafted through the open windows, causing Henry to believe there was no better place, at least not in his experience. Henry still believed there was no better place, and if it wasn't for the tragic fire that happened shortly after his grandmother's death, he would have lived the rest of his days in her house. Grandma Pat was an enigma. As fine of a woman as she was, she was not a snobby elitist, 
and Henry was quick to remind himself of that. Sometimes his own lavish tastes blinded him to the world around him, and he was keenly aware that Grandma wouldn't approve of his disdain for the common person. At times, Henry's face flushed, knowing that his grandmother watched him from the other side, chastising him for his haughty ways. His grandmother never lost touch of her place in the cosmos. Her life of wealth did not mean she was above anyone else, and she approached all aspects of life with the same humble opinion. While she had fine furniture and household adornments, Grandma Pat also collected strange, ordinary items, such as doorknobs, buttons, and beautiful rocks. Grandpa Jameson left her a hefty fortune to live on after he passed, so monetary value meant nothing to Grandma when it came to her collections. She told Henry many times, Collect what makes you happy, regardless of what anyone else thinks. Henry took her advice to heart. Grandma's enthusiasm for acquiring and categorizing odd things helped Henry not only with his own hobbies, but in his career, too. Insects fascinated him as a child, and his grandmother encouraged him to collect those. It turned into a profession. As the chief entomologist at the university, he displayed insects from everywhere imaginable. Some were common, others were exotic. Henry loved them all, but the stranger the better was his motto. He traveled far and wide and never failed to bring specimens back with him. One unusual quirk of Henry's was that he insisted on finding pears. He wouldn't place a single specimen in his case until he knew it had its mate. Both male and female of a species must be together, or the display was worthless in Henry's mind. Who knew where his compulsion came from? Even Grandma Pat wasn't so rigid, but Henry was a stickler. Henry spent Tuesdays at home, and in honor of his grandmother, he used that time to go through his collections, making sure all was well with each one and adding to them when appropriate. A perk of being the top professor in his field at the university was that he could call some shots. One reason he'd been drawn to academia was the flexibility in his work schedule. As long as he gave his lectures, held consistent office hours for students, and continued his research, thereby bringing grant money and fame to the institution, he could pretty much do as he pleased. Spending Tuesdays at home to dote over his collections pleased Henry. Henry stopped for a moment as he became lost in a memory of his grandmother. He could see her pruning rose bushes wearing that silly bonnet of hers. Henry sighed. She was such an instrumental part of his life, right up until her death. After all these years, he could smell her perfume and hear her sweet voice. She taught him all that was important in life. She taught him about the need to travel and the need to have a healthy curiosity. With the money necessary to support his every whim, she had indulged Henry. He always had whatever toy he wanted as a child and he had the fastest sports car money could buy as a young man. She also provided him books to read about faraway places, and as he became older, she gave him the ability to travel to those far-off destinations. Her one requirement was that he bring back souvenirs for his collections. Oh, Grandma Pat, how I miss you. I feel so alone without you. A tear welled in his eye. It was true. Henry was alone. Both parents died in a crash ten years before. Not that they'd ever been close to him. One child was all they chose to bear, so he had no siblings to grow old with. As an adult, he had yet to find a friend who shared his sense of adventure and enthusiasm for finding the oddities you encounter when traveling outside of your comfort zone. Once he thought he had a girlfriend, but it turned out she had dust in her eye, and hadn't been winking at him at all. Such a lonely life, Henry led. I can't dwell on that right now. Grandma wouldn't want me to be sad. When looking over his collections, he always began with the stamps, because that's where the shared passion they had began. Yes, those stamps were his prized possessions, because they represented a bond that neither time nor his grandmother's death could diminish. Henry moved to the next room, where he checked his collection of traps and weapons. 
It's funny that he had a fascination with such devices. For all his love of travel, Henry wasn't what you would call an outdoorsman. Not even the pith helmet hanging on the nail over his trap collection allowed him to pretend he'd ever be mistaken for a man's man. No, he'd always been weak and scrawny. The closest he'd came to a big game hunt was watching with his binoculars from the vehicle. Still, his love of traps and weaponry held his attention, and it even came in quite handy at times for work and play. The chime of the clock in the living room reminded him it was almost time to eat. Henry considered himself a connoisseur of fine food and drink, and he kept a well-stocked refrigerator, pantry, and wine cellar. His stomach rumbled at the thought of the fine lunch awaiting him in the kitchen. He'd brought it home as takeout last night, knowing he'd be too preoccupied today to go anywhere to eat or to cook for himself. His mouth watered in anticipation. Before lunch, however, he had a few tasks to attend to. The next display was a sentimental favorite of his. He perused the collection of fine books, some left to him by his grandmother and others acquired on his own. He always loved a fine piece of writing. Some poignant memories washed over him as he relived trips he'd made to find these literary beauties. Life as a collector and a traveler was full of so many joys the common citizens just wouldn't understand. Wealth was a means to achieving a life well lived. With that thought, Henry reached his most intriguing collection of all. The sheer size of it nearly filled an entire room, but it was worth it, especially now that he had found the missing mate to his crown piece. A collection is never complete until each piece has its match. Joy filled Henry as he carefully lifted the lid on the glass box. Using tweezers specially designed for this purpose, he lifted the wriggling female so he could place her in the display case next to the fine male counterpart he'd already secured with pins. My, you're a feisty one. This will just take a moment or two. I need to mount you just right. You're more beautiful than any butterfly back at the office. Don't struggle, my sweet. With that, he applied a dab of glue and raised the first pin to put her in place. His most recent trip to Earth had been worth it to find a specimen such as this. He finally had his match set of Homo sapiens. Thank you for joining me for Into the Night, an anthology series written by Caroline Giamanco and narrated by Nari Kwok. Please give us a like if you enjoyed what you heard. Also, please hit the subscribe button below and the alarm bell in case of emergency. I mean, to be notified of our most recent content. You can also find us on your favorite podcast directory. See you in two weeks. And remember, whether in the shadows or in the daylight, all twisted paths take you into the night. <laughs>